All right, what are we going to do for Valentine's Day this year? We've done a few in the past that are kind of stretching it. We could do something like that. And there's that one review copy we've had for months now that we still haven't touched. Ah, oh, heck it, why not? Here's a silent voice. Kyoto Animation has been, in short, on a non-stop railroad of success for about 15 years now. Anyone who was paying attention to anime in the 2000s and the 2010s likely saw a Kyoto anime production at some point, even if they didn't realize. Clanad, Clanad After Story, The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, Lucky Star, Kaon, Free, Sound Euphorium, Violet Evergarden, Liz and the Bluebird, A Silent Voice, any of those sound familiar? At least some of them should if you've been watching this show at all. Kyoto Animation has proved to be a seriously enduring studio filled with exceptional animators, directors, and writers. It should be no surprise then that today's film, A Silent Voice, turned out to be just another in Kyoto Animation's long list of hits. Viewers of the channel will remember Naoko Yamada and Reiko Yoshida, respectively the director and writer for A Silent Voice, from their collaborative film for Kyoto Animation several years later, Liz and the Bluebird. Together, Yamada and Yoshida worked to adapt the popular manga A Silent Voice, which ran between 2013 and 2014. The original manga was penned by Yoshitoki Oima, and has since been translated and released in English, so if you're unfamiliar with the project, you might want to check this one out. Both projects concern themselves with a young man named Ishida, who, at the start of the film, hates himself enough to attempt suicide. From this perspective, we travel back in time to try and comprehend how he arrived at this point before continuing onward to see how Ishida handles life going forward. We learn that Ishida is an outcast from his classmates, which is a central focus of the film. What actions and social moves he took to become so heavily ostracized. Essentially, Ishida feels bad for Nishiyama, being out of school after her own ostracization. In a fit of rage, Ishida throws all of his classmates under the bus and the whole class, in turn, ostracizes him. We also explore, in the present, how he hopes to fix this status as a pariah after several years spent alone. Ishida must overcome himself and make amends with his own problems before he can love, or for that matter, become true friends with, anyone again. Opposite Ishida, we have Nishiyama a girl who joined Ishida's class in 6th grade. As the class quickly learns, Nishiyama is deaf, meaning that she is bullied incessantly by most of her classmates. Even those who don't bully her, we find, hold a bit of contempt for Nishiyama behind her back. Ishida and Nishiyama share a nickname, Shochan, which helps open the door to the two young people developing a relationship. A long, winding, convoluted relationship which begins with Ishida disliking Nishiyama, potentially to fit in, and moving on to Ishida feeling bad for Nishiyama. By the conclusion, Ishida is trying to regain his social foothold in the rest of the school while learning to understand and even be friends with Nishiyama. This narrative, with a number of secondary characters introduced along the way, Ishida's friends from before, a new host of friends, Nishiyama's sister and mother, the latter of whom hates Ishida by the way, all help color the cast and further complicate the main narrative. Full disclosure, we watched this film adaptation without reading the manga first, and we came out feeling like everything was clearly presented and understandable without needing the manga to back it up. After exploring the manga later, we found that some minor points are explained in the source material, which might clear up any questions the viewer could be left with by the film. For example, what happens in the scene where Uedo takes Nishima's hearing aid in the street? Minor points in the film ignored, like this, are thankfully clarified in the manga. The manga is definitely worth checking out if you enjoyed the movie. Though the adaptation sticks relatively close to the main plot of the source material, minus the movie not having the student film aspect, the manga gives a broader and deeper context to the situations and characters. Kyoto Animation's take on a silent voice is, in short, very pretty. It's beautifully animated with a great amount of care being given to making the sign language present in the film as realistic as possible. Occasionally, the film feels like a music video, thanks to on-screen text and the syncing with music. And boy, does this one have some fitting music. The soundtrack for A Silent Voice is both warm and visceral, filled with lots of piano, where you can hear the organic, woody clunks of the instrument in the empty spaces between notes. 
This audio quality is further extended to the film's awesome sound design, which helps drive home the central point of a silent voice, an exploration of how those with hearing and those who are deaf interact in modern Japan. As such, it is as much an auditory experience as it is a film. Everyone has a huge voice. Of course they do, they're kids. Meanwhile, Nishiyama has a tiny voice, which exemplifies her plight. Over the course of the film, the narrative is carried out in how Nishiyama learns to use her voice better, both to try to fit in and to try to find herself. In other words, Nishiyama's voice actor effectively shows how Nishiyama grows as a person and as a teenager coming into her own. Beyond voice acting itself, a silent voice overall embodies this movement through sound too. Its sound design oscillates between loudness and quietness, forcing the audience to recognize the presence of the sound as much as the moving image. At its base, a silent voice exists as an exploration of deafness in Japan. Japanese culture's relationship with deafness goes way back, all the way to the mythical origins of Shinto. The first child born of the creators, Izanami and Izanagi, was born without limbs and with massive ears. This child, Hiruko, also known as the deity Ebisu, patron of fishing and good luck, was known as the leech child due to his deformities. What's more, in spite of his large ears, Hiruko was completely deaf. Both Hiruko and his younger sibling, Awashima, were sent off without ceremony due to their imperfections. The other gods explained that prior to producing these offspring, Izanami, the mother, was the first to speak during their bond, where Izanagi, the father, should have been the first to speak. As Caitlin Steinbrook, Rochelle, and Kristen Dexter write over on Tofugu, prior to the Meiji period, quote, if you were blind in Japan, you could be a shiatsu masseuse, play the koto or the shamisen, or be a moneylender. But these sweet gigs didn't exist for deaf Japanese. Instead, most of them performed ordinary manual labor jobs, like farming." End quote. Around the 1870s, shortly following the transition from the military rule of the shogun to the restoration of power to the emperor, Japanese sign language was first conceptualized. This was in response to a foreign mission by Japanese dignitaries traveling to Europe to observe the success and failures of the continent's various governments in order to determine how their own government might evolve. In the modern day, the deaf population of Japan still seem to face a bit of discrimination, though systems have been in place for more than a century now to assist in societal integration. Sign language in Japanese, JSL, is not the same as American Sign Language, ASL. In Japanese, the varying levels of formality are still kept and cannot be escaped. A lot of times the deaf schools are considered academic, according to one poster over on Reddit. This could be used to explain why Nishiyama's mother is so adamant about her child going to quote-unquote regular school in the film. In the manga, meanwhile, it's definitely explained that she doesn't want her daughter to feel abnormal or to get special treatment because of her disability. In a very moving interview we found, which is available on YouTube, an elderly deaf woman explains that prior to World War II, the deaf were treated very poorly in her experience. When discussing her home life, we learn a potential reason as to why Nishiyama's mother is so unwilling to learn sign language for the benefit of her daughter. This woman talks about how her father allowed signing in the house, but never outside of the home. As she puts it, he preferred silence over voicing and signing. She states he was willing to learn some as an educator himself, but that he still wanted to retain a certain amount of face in the public eye. Since then, conditions seem to be improving. In the aforementioned Reddit thread, user WoofyGirl, who states she taught ASL in Tokyo for a year as well as interning at a deaf university in Japan, quote, the hearing world's view of deaf people in Japan, though, can be a bit different to the US. There is discrimination in housing and hiring. Schools for the deaf are generally oral through elementary school, and then some permit sign language at middle school, others not until high school. Older people remember being ashamed to sign in public, though it's commonplace now. Deaf people couldn't drive in Japan until 2008. Hard of hearing were permitted in the 80s, I think. It's getting a bit better now, but in a country where the other is at a disadvantage and deaf people are historically the other, it's been a slow road." End quote. Woofy Girl goes on to conclude by reassuring readers, quote, But it's a wonderful place. I keep in touch with my deaf Japanese friends daily. 
I miss the Shinjuku and Yokohama Deaf Happy Hours, Miwi no Hi Festival, Fusao. Japanese deaf people are wonderful, and I miss living among them." End quote. If we take Woofy Girl at her word, it sounds as though a silent voice is an accurate portrayal of the social realities of deafness in Japan, both for the individual and the family. The film explores the life of a deaf individual through sound design, sign language classes for both Nishiyama and her sister, and with how everyone interacts with Nishiyama. It also examines the bullying Nishiyama experiences, especially as a kid, in a harshly realistic manner. What's more, a silent voice takes a look at the defensiveness for Nishiyama, from her mother and her sister, who both wish to protect Nishiyama from the world outside, and eventually Ishida, who overcomes his own biases and learns to protect her as well. What's more, the film is an exploration of youth and depression in the modern era. Spoiler alert, everyone in this movie is f***ing depressed. We learn through Ishida's attempts at building a new set of friends which will include himself and Nishiyama how everyone carries their own baggage. This goes away to explain why all of them interact the way they do, and perhaps more importantly why so many treat Nishiyama poorly. Though the film never approaches the territory of allowing these feelings to serve as excuses for their behavior, just as explanations. Through their interactions with one another, we see why all these kids are so upset why they are self-loathing, why they're avoiding responsibility, or otherwise overcompensating for it. In turn, this means that everyone can find something to relate to in a silent voice. The central development of the film thus turns out to be how, over time, Ishida and the others learn to live together. Ishida attempts to patch things up with his old classmates, while making new friends along the way, Nagatsuka and Nishiyama chiefly. They all bring their own baggage, the new and the old alike all in the process learning how to interact and work both as individuals and a cohesive unit. In a way, a silent voice is an exploration of a community in flux. It begins with the introduction of a new element, in this case Nishiyama, and ending with the group attempting to bond more strongly than ever, in spite of all their points of friction. For anyone who's had their interest piqued, A Silent Voice is a solid, sobering portrait of deafness in modern Japan. It pays its dues to the history of abuse and shunning these folks have suffered for centuries, and tries to uplift all of these characters. At the same time, the film never shies away from showing the ugly truth about what young people may be up against in contemporary society as they attempt to work together and discover themselves. Let us know in the comments below what you think about A Silent Voice, and what other Kyoto Animation projects you'd like to see us cover in the future. This one opened the door to learning a lot about an aspect of Japanese life we hadn't come across before, and we would like to bet there's much more to delve into in their greater catalog.